Hey everyone, Linus here. Today, we're diving into the world of FTP servers. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. We'll walk through setting up your own FTP server right on your Windows machine. Think of an FTP server like a secure digital Dropbox. It lets you share files between computers over a network, like your home network or the internet. We'll break it down into easy steps. So grab a snack and let's get started. Ready to become the ultimate file sharing guru? Let's do this. Sharing files the secure way. So why bother with an FTP server? Well, imagine you need to send a large video file to a friend. Emailing it might be slow or hit file size limits. Using a USB drive means physically meeting up. An FTP server solves this. It's like having your own private file sharing platform. You control access, security, and it's super convenient for transferring large files. Plus, it's way more secure than just tossing files on a public cloud service. Whether you're a photographer sharing high-res images, a developer collaborating on code, or just want a better way to manage files between your devices, an FTP server is a handy tool to have. One of the key benefits of using an FTP server is the ability to encrypt your data during transfer. This means that your files are protected from unauthorized access while they are being sent over the internet. For businesses, this is crucial as it ensures sensitive information remains confidential. Additionally, FTP servers can be accessed from various devices, including mobile phones and tablets, making it versatile. Over the years, file transfer methods have evolved, but FTP remains a reliable and efficient choice. You can also customize your FTP server settings to fit your specific needs, whether it's for personal use or business. While cloud storage services are popular, they often come with limitations and security concerns that FTP servers can address. So, next time you need to transfer files, consider using an FTP server for a secure, efficient, and customizable solution. All right, let's get our hands dirty. Today, we're diving into the process of setting up an FTP server role on your Windows machine. First things first, we need to install the FTP server role on your Windows machine. This is an essential step for anyone looking to manage file transfers efficiently. Don't worry, it's like installing any other Windows feature. If you've installed software before, this will be a breeze. Head over to your control panel and look for programs and features. This is where you'll find the options to add or remove Windows features. Click on Turn Windows Features on or off. This will open up a new window with a list of features you can enable or disable. You'll see a list of options. These are all the features that Windows can support. Scroll down until you find Internet Information Services and expand it. This is where the FTP server role is located. Check the box next to FTP server. This will enable the basic FTP functionality on your machine. You might also want to check FTP extensibility and FTP service for some extra features. These options provide additional capabilities that can be very useful. Click OK and Windows will do its thing. It will take a few moments to install the necessary components, so be patient. Once the installation is complete, you'll have a fully functional FTP server ready to go. Congratulations, you've successfully installed the FTP server role. Now, let's configure our FTP server using the Internet Information Services IIS Manager. Sounds intimidating, but it's just a fancy control panel. Open IIS Manager. Search for it in the Start menu. In the left-hand pane, you'll see your computer's name. Right-click on it and select Add FTP Site. Give your FTP site a name and choose the folder where you want to store your files. This will be the root directory for your FTP server. Click Next and configure the binding options. Usually, the defaults are fine. Section 5. Opening the doors. Configuring Windows Firewall. We're almost there. 
but before we can start sharing files, we need to tell Windows Firewall to let FTP traffic through. Open Windows Firewall, you can search for it in the Start menu, click on Advanced Settings, and then Inbound Rules. Right-click on Inbound Rules and select New Rule. Choose Predefined and select FTP Server from the list. Click Next a few times, accepting the defaults, and make sure the rule is enabled. Boom! Your firewall is now FTP friendly. Section 6 Testing, Testing Accessing your FTP server In this section, we will walk you through the steps to ensure your FTP server is accessible and functioning correctly. Time for the moment of truth. This is where we find out if all our hard work has paid off. Let's test if our FTP server is up and running. This is a crucial step to confirm that everything is set up properly. You can use an FTP client like FileZilla. It's free and user-friendly. FileZilla is a popular choice because of its simplicity and efficiency. Open FileZilla and enter your server's IP address. You can find it by typing ipconfig in the command prompt in the host field. This IP address is essential for establishing a connection. Use 21 for the port field. This is the default port for FTP connections, ensuring smooth communication between your client and server. Enter your Windows username and password and hit Quick Connect. This step authenticates your access to the server. If everything went well, you should see your FTP server's directory listing. This means your connection is successful and you have access to your server's files. You can now upload and download files to your heart's content. This functionality allows you to manage your server's files efficiently, making it easy to transfer data as needed. Section 7. Keeping it safe. Security and user management tips. Security is paramount. Here are some tips. Create strong passwords for your FTP accounts. Limit access by creating separate user accounts with specific folder permissions. Consider using SFTP, Secure FTP, for encryption. You can manage users and permissions directly in IIS Manager. Look for the FTP authentication and FTP authorization rules features. Section 8. You did it. Customizing your FTP server. Congratulations! You've successfully set up your own FTP server. Feel free to explore the advanced settings in IIS Manager to customize your server further. You can adjust bandwidth limits, set up email notifications, and even create virtual directories. The possibilities are endless. Remember, this is just the beginning. Keep experimenting, and soon you'll be an FTP master.